Hi guys, welcome to another Kamikaze creation video. Uh, she's out, as you saw in the last video. If you've watched my last video, the engine is out, uh, lifted it out by myself. Uh, no assistance required. If you know all the right steps, know the balance of the engine, you know, she slides out easy. I'm sure you've all done it. But anyway, the 1G is out. Um, and I finally have worked out that this is the Gen 3 of the 1G motors, which apparently are the best of the 1G motors. It, it doesn't make it any easier to get to parts, I don't think. I rang a company today uh, about um, single turbo uh, inlet manifolds. They're actually in Toowoomba Gobies or something like that. They're up in Toowoomba. Um, they do a lot of 1G. They've got 1G stuff left over. <laughs> um, but 1JZ, 2JZ parts and a lot of other stuff um, for these Toyota motors. So they're up in Toowoomba. But uh, talking to the gentleman I talked to there, he said uh, the 1G GDE, um, they struggle to get parts for these days, which might might be the detriment of that motor sitting right there if i can't get parts to do a build um it might not end up back in the car you know i might go to a 1jz or a, you know 2jz's are a fair bit more expensive um but they're my options and i'm not after massive horsepower i'm just after a car that you know got plenty of torque goes pretty well um, I'm not going to be racing it or dragging it or, or drifting it. I don't think it's just a just to build a nice strong car that drives well, a good street car. So the one JZ could be the go. Um, I'm talking to a, an associate tonight that's doing a bit of engine building stuff for me and knows a fair bit. So after I talk to him tonight, I know, might know a bit more of where I'm going. But I'm going to start pulling this apart, pulling it down, uh, get to the base motor. The motor is running goes well uh, so maybe if I pull it down to the uh, bare essentials and do a bit of a budget on upgrading to that uh, that manifold was about 1200 bucks for a single turbo manifold with a turbo you're looking at about four four and a half grand um, and the turbo would be reusable on something else it's probably the only cost of the manifold that would worry me uh, 1200 bucks because it'll only adapt to this motor but anyway, I'll start pulling this down and getting to where I can have a close look at it. Keep watching. So what I'm aiming to do at the moment is basically take those turbos off. And that's one of the reasons I pulled it out because it was so complex and trying to get to the bolts. This, uh, this is where the thermostat sits in here. And if you follow that down, there's a series of water lines come off it. Um, up in behind, right up in here, there's a little bolt attaching onto that line that's stopping me get that off. And those lines run down in under and around to here and are all joined together. So, so complex. And I'm expecting once I get those turbos off, um, it'll all open up and I reckon a lot of those lines with a, with a single turbo manifold on there would become redundant which will make it a lot simpler to work on and fit into the car. So that's the O2 sensor that was sitting in the uh, exhaust manifold, which runs to the computer, it tells the computer how much, um, what the sort of air fuel ratio is, and allows the computer to adjust the uh, fuel delivery.
So there you go guys, that's the one of the turbos off, I just went a roundabout way. There's actually a gland um, set up, uh, two halves that hold that turbo in place. So once I loosened that off, it made it a bit easier, so the assembly will come apart uh, piece by piece. So I'm into it now, it shouldn't take uh, too much longer to break it down. It's been a long road, but I think I'm getting there. Watch this. So here's the intake manifold over to the twin turbos of which one has been removed. It's sitting over here. And goes on that end just there. Amazingly complex and hard to get off. But it's off now. So what I'm looking at at the moment is just removing some of these uh, water lines and removing the thermostat housing and just tidying up the side of the block a bit. So this is what I'm left with. Nuts and bolts, as someone said to me. Don't worry about it, it's only nuts and bolts. Here's the turbo set up, all pulled off. Heap of the fluid lines running all across the engine. And she's a lot cleaner in this side. You can actually see where you're going. If I'm going to go with this engine, there'll be a few modifications, a few differences with the running of the fluid lines, especially if I'm uh, going for an oil-cooled turbo rather than water-cooled. Don't need so many of those water lines, that's for sure. But she looks a lot better with all that off. Starting to break it down. I think that'll probably do for this afternoon. Get down to that base engine is my aim. Over this side, all of the inlet side of it. And I've seen some custom inlet manifolds like uh, fabricated welded inlet manifolds for these that have been made up. So I'd be interested to know about them and what people have done with them. But I'm going to break down that whole side of the motor and get down to the base unit. Um, as I said, it's a runner. It goes okay. And I've been told it's had a fair bit of work done to it. Whether it's bottom end work, I don't know. But once I get it down, I might take the sump off and have a look at the big end. Again, being a... Uh, the, what, what I saw on the Toy Mod site was the engine number for these... For the... Um, uh, first and second version of these was around about cylinder number four but on this one it's down right below the starter motor which is gen 3 of the uh, 1g gte motors so this is a gen 3 one which apparently is the better one i think they got an upgraded crank i think they got rid of a few of those oil problems so uh, if i can work the inlet single turbo and uh, exhaust set up out could be a feasibility of going back in. Anyway, that's it for me.